So today we want to continue and what I want to show you by the word of God in Psalm 119 is to actually look into some benefit. Again, we, we, you, can, you can look at look at this throughout the word of God really, but we are just focusing on Psalm 119. So let's look at some of the benefit that Psalm 119 tells us that we can receive by being in God's word. Number one, and I'm not going to take too much time again we are just going to go through them as quickly as we can psalm 119 verse 2 says that blessed are those who keeps his testimony who seek him with their whole heart do you want joy do you want blessing do you want happiness okay it is as we keep his testimony those who seek him with their whole heart number two says that the word of god will keep us from sinning how can a young man keep his way pure but by guiding it according to your word. If you and I have any sin in our life, if there's sin in our life that we are struggling with, okay, sin of omission, sin of commission, the way to break that is get into the word, okay? Read the word, meditate upon the word, get into the word. The Bible says, how can a young man and also elderly man, elderly woman, how can we keep our, by guiding it? The word of God is a guide. Number three, it offers free counseling. Your testimony are my delight. They are my counselors. You know, it's interesting that some people, they have problems, they go to unbeliever, uh, people to, to advise them the word of God can give us counsel the word of God can give us instruction can enlighten us wherever we find ourselves you have question you need direction go to a man or a woman of God that can use the word of God to show you direction don't go and take instruction from one unbeliever sinner somewhere and give you a counsel the what the Bible called the counsel of the ungodly now let's move on to number four the word of God guards against the trap of self-seeking. Incline my high, heart to your testimony and not to selfish gain. So as we study the word of God, we become people that are interested in order that work in love and not just selfishness. The word of God gives hope. And take it not thy word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your rule or is in your word. That is verse 43. My hope is in your word. Look, we are living in a world now where many people have lost hope. Many people have lost their livelihood. But if you need hope, get into the word of God. Remember what we said the last time? We are reading all this according to your word. According to your word. You need hope. You need encouragement. Get into the word of God. Let's go to number six. Verse 45 says, And I shall walk in a wide place, for I have sought your precepts. The word of God grant us freedom. Verse 50, This is my comfort in all my affliction, that your promise gives me life. Number eight, It gives us something to sing about. Number nine, It is an anchor of truth amid a sea of lies. The mainstream social media lies to people. But where can we get truth? Where can we get that anchor that would hold us firm? It is in the word of God. Let's go on to number 10. Let those who fear you turn to me that they may know your testimony. So the word of God allow us to be an example to others. Number 11. It offers us hope while we wait. Verse 81 of Psalm 119, My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. So when we read verse 92 of Psalm 119, If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. It sustains us during hard season. And we've mentioned this in a couple of the other verses that we have read. These are hard season. Look, I am passing through it. You are passing through it and the coronavirus and the lockdown and then all the all the all the unrest that our government is causing in our nation made even this very difficult season but the psalmist said i will have perished in my affliction but for the law of god so let's get into god's word you see when things are tough like this one of the things we stop doing is stop praying stop studying the word but that is a mistake when things get good get tough get into the word of god and all those things we are going to talk about just read it study it meditate upon it because the word sustains us during hard season now let's move on to number 13 
I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. And that is what we are dealing with now, that we need to understand that the word of God is not just letter. There is life. Okay, so if there's any situation where there's death, maybe physical death, maybe emotional death, maybe spiritual death, God can give us life by means of his word as we saturate ourselves, as we dwell, as we continue in his word. Now, let's go on to 14. It gives wisdom, wow, and understanding. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. Number 15 Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet, hallelujah, and a light unto my path. The word of God does what? It gives light to the path we should take. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It will give direction. If you are, if you and I are very honest in knowing the will of God, the, 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 the direction that God wants us to go, get into the word, pray over it, meditate in the word, and the word of God will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Let's move on to 16. Verse 1, 1 10 says, The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. So, the word of God keeps us from falling into the enemy's trap. And some of these people they are so subtle, they are so wise, they painted sin as if it is pleasurable. But when we dwell in the word of God and when we allow the word of God to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, it will keep us from falling into the enemy's trap. Hallelujah. So let's move on. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. That is verse 117. So the word of God acts as a shield around us to protect us from all the fiery that of the wicked one. It's a shield around us. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your rules. So the word of God help us to know the character of God. Listen, you cannot know God outside his word. The word of God help us to know who God is. And as we see him as he is, we are changed into his image from one level of glory to another. Your promise is well tried and your servant loves it. So the word of God is how we experience the faithfulness of God. One of the things that we see in the word of God is that God is faithful. Listen to me. God is faithful. God is righteous. God is faithful. He will not forget your labor of love. Our God is a faithful God. Don't let any situation make you to doubt the faithfulness or to doubt the love of God. Let's move on. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. Now, what we're going to do now is, again, we, we are looking at all these benefits, okay, that come to us from the Word of God. And then we are, we are, we are seeing and we are getting motivated. Are you getting motivated? We are getting motivated. You know, I need to study. I need to read the Word. I need to meditate upon the Word. Yes, that is it. As we begin to see the benefit that the Word of God brings to us, it motivates us to give the effort that is necessary to study the scripture praise the lord now we are going to move on to another we're ch changing gear now still talking about the word of god now we are not going to just stay in in some 119 what i want to talk about now a powerful metaphor that we see in the scripture for the word of god again th this is to motivate us to study to get into the word of god when you read first peter chapter 1 verse 23 now i'm not going to be reading the scripture this time you can read take all the scripture down and you can go back or listen to the video again you can go back and read this thing yourself first peter chapter 1 verse 23 shows us that the bible is like a seed that saves us. The Bible is like a seed that saves us. There's salvation in the Bible. Number two, the, the, we saw that the Bible is like a food that nourishes us. The, so it's a seed that saves. It's like food that nourishes and satisfies us. So in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it talks about the word of God being milk. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, it talks about the word of God being meat. 
in John chapter 6 verse 51, it talks about the word of God being bread. And in Psalm 19 verse 10, it talks about the word of God being honey. There's salvation in God's word. And we saw that there's nourishment. There's satisfaction in the word of God because the word of God is like milk, it's like meat, it's like bread, it's like honey. In other words, as you and I get into the word of God, this will be our experience. We'll begin to experience salvation, begin to experience nourishment and satisfaction. Faction. Now, let's move on. The word of God is like waters that washes us. That is when you read Ephesians 5, 25 and 26 and Psalm 119 verse, verse 9. The word is like water that washes us. The word of God, the Bible is like fire that cleanses us. That is Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29. Now, as you study the word of God, you will be corrected. You will be rebuked. You will be instructed. And this is how we are cleansed by the word of God. Now let's move on quickly. The word of God is like a hammer that shatters us. That's Jeremiah 23, 29. The word of God is like a sword that cut deep into us. God is coming for a church that is full of glory, that is full of holiness, that is full of righteousness. And by the word of God is is you know, removing all the draws and all the impurity from our life. And also we can look at the armor also as the way God can use that to come against our enemy. But we are looking at the Bible now in our own life, okay, in the name of Jesus. And it says that the Bible is like a sword, okay, it cuts. The Bible says it divides asunder to the, you know, the portion between bone and marrow and it's a designer of the intent of the heart okay we can also look at the word of god as a sword with which we fight the enemy amen to jesus the bible is like a medicine to keep us from the sickness of sin and also to heal our body you talk about the, the, the by his stripes we are healed the bible is like a medicine the bible is like a mirror to reflect ourselves to us in other words when we study the bible we are not just studying the bible just for the sake of having head knowledge we are studying the bible so that we can do it it's like a mirror you go in there and it shows you things that needs to be corrected also you see who god says you are you act according to what you see in the scripture so the bible is like a mirror to reflect ourselves to ourselves the bible is like silver purified with fire the bible is like a lamp to our feet we mentioned that in our previous lesson the bible is like a lamp it shines onto our path so that we see where we are going to put our feet the bible is like a counselor that comforts us we mentioned that a little bit also you need cancer you need direction you can go to the scripture and the scripture will give you direction the bible is like a forecaster that never never fail our god has told us in the scripture the thing that is going to happen in the end of time so that we will know when they happen so that we will have comfort when they happen we will not be taken by surprise we will be ready for those things that are going to happen upon the face of the earth the bible opposes the bible orders our steps the bible produces joy again we've gone through all this so i'm just going to run through them the bible strengthens us the bible gives us hope the bible gives us light the bible gives us understanding the bible shows us what god's will the Bible builds us up. The Bible produces fruit. The Bible convicts of sin. The Bible converts the soul. The Bible cleanses the conscience. The Bible consecrates our life. The Bible corrects wrong. The Bible confirms that which is right. The Bible comforts the heart. The word of God that you have in your hand is full of power. There are so many things that you and I suffer because we will not study the scripture. The devil will do everything possible to keep us away from this book. And sin will keep us away from this book. The world will keep us away from this book. You and I can be so busy. And I mean, like man, of a like passion like you, we can be so busy that we don't have quality time to spend in the scripture. But if we do that, we are only denying ourselves of all these great benefits, all these great possibility that you and I can have by getting into the word of god do you need to be upheld do you need your step to be ordered do you need joy in your life do i need strength do i need hope do you need light do i do you need wisdom and understanding what about knowing the will of god are you struggling to know god's will 
Do you need something to build you up, to encourage you? What about fruitfulness? In every area of our life, physically, emotionally, spiritually, do you need fruitfulness? What about sin? Okay, are you struggling in some areas of your life? Okay, what about your conscience? Are things coming into your, you know, things you don't want to think about, polluting your conscience? What about knowing what is right and what is wrong and living in a right conscience before God? All this can only be accomplished by us getting and getting into the scripture in the right way. If you and I are studying the Bible and we are not experiencing all these things, it's because we are not doing it right. It's because we are not doing it right. So we've gone through these various benefits that we can receive, <laughs> praise the Lord, by studying the scripture. So what we need to do, obviously, now is to ask ourselves, how do we do it? Okay, how do we get into this? Praise the Lord. How, what, how, what, what should be our response to the scripture? This should be our response to the Bible, having understood all the things that we have studied now. Now, I'm going to come back variously and talk about some, not all, some of this. But this should be our response. Now that we know the benefit, now that we know the, 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 the power, the benefit, of the word. This is how we should respond to the Bible. Number one, we must desire it. We must read it. We must study it. We must meditate it. We must live by it. We must use it. We must heed it. We must rightly divide it. We must preach it. We must suffer for it. If need be, die for it. Do you desire the word of God above gold? You know, does the word of God actually mean much to me than silver and gold? Does the word of God is the word of God precious to me? Do I desire it? Do I wake up in the morning hungry for the word of God, desiring the word of God? We must desire it. And that desire must bring us to a place of reading it, of studying it. Now we are going to look through those, reading the scripture, studying the scripture, of meditating upon it. And this is what we need to do. This is how we connect with the scripture. This is how we respond to the scripture. With And I I'm, I'm desiring, I'm, I'm expecting, I'm praying that all these benefit that we have gone through will build a desire in your heart, a hunger in your heart to get into the Word, to read it, to study it, to meditate upon it. And obviously, the end purpose of that is so that we can live by it. We can heed it, we can live by it. Okay? And also, as we engage, taste and see that the Lord is good, we can also then preach it. We can also then share it with other people. And when we study the scripture and, 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 and understand who God is and understand who we are, then we'll be ready to suffer for it. Remember, the word of God will strengthen you to suffer for his kingdom, to suffer. And, and the truth is that we are living in a time now when People are suffering for their faith. And this is the word that will be able to strengthen us to suffer for him and if need be, die for him. And next time, by the grace of God, we are going to then look at how do we do it? How do we rightly divide the word of truth? How do we read it? How do we study it? And how do we meditate upon it? Before we go, I just want to give you, if you are listening to me tonight, and you are, you've not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, listen to me, you need to do that. Okay, because the wages of sin is death. God does not want sin, sinner to go to hell. He wants every man, every woman to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And there's, Jesus is the truth. There's no truth in any other religion. There's no truth in any other religious leaders. So today, God is knocking at your heart and asking you to come back home. You can bow down your head and repent of your sinful life and, and invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord, your God, and your Savior. And ask Him to save you. Ask, you to, ask Him to deliver you from hell. And He will come in and He will help you. He will, not just, he will not just try to add to you. He will take the heart of stone and He will put in to you the heart of flesh. That is what it means to be born again. And then you can then start this journey of growing through your fellowship with God and the people of God and studying the scripture.